You're listening to Mystic Magic, exploring our spirit to understand our lives. I'm Reverend Celeste A. Frazier, your host. I'm so glad that you're back for season two. The plot thickens. It gets even more and more exciting. For example, today's show, I feature one of my dearest friends, Reverend Vianella Vaughn Austin. And our topic today is ancient truths, modern myths. Now, a myth is not a lie. A myth is simply a story that we get from a history, from exploring some natural phenomenon or even a social phenomenon, typically involving supernatural beings or events. So we're gonna touch on all of that today as we explore ancient truths, modern myths. What fun. Put on your boots, we're getting deep, and stay tuned. Hey, hey, Mystic Magic fans, we are in for a wonderful time for season two. We're starting off strong with my dear friend, Reverend Vianella Vaughn Austin. I have such great experiences that I've had with this woman and such wonderful insights. Let me tell you a little bit about her. For over 20 years, Reverend Vianella has traveled the world from Egypt to India, from Peru to Cambodia, from South Africa to France, with many places in between, studying personal development and spiritual anchoring. While her professional career was in information technology, specializing in technical services and enterprise infrastructure management, she has continued to work to fulfill her passion for universal principles and compassionate living, what she calls quantum consciousness or integrated universal spirituality. She became a religious science practitioner at the Agape International Spiritual Center in 2000, a student of Circles of Light Institute of Ancient Mysteries, and she was ordained at Kepra Institute of Applied Metaphysics. She's a science of mind minister and a teacher of consciousness, raising practices and world philosophies. And she's dedicated to providing ways to give people back to their true self through a spiritual evolution in human consciousness. Reverend Vianella holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and a Master of Science in Spiritual Science and Transpersonal Counseling. She has spent more than 20 years applying these principles found in world religions, studying, exploring. She's been studying spiritual psychology and geometry and philosophy, and she facilitates personal and collective transformation through speaking and teaching in spiritual centers and conducting heart-centered seminars for small businesses and corporations, and providing private counseling for individuals and groups. So through her ministry, she has proclaimed herself a practitioner of the science of conscious awareness, based on her trademark development of conscious conversations, a process of self-discovery for personal, community, business, and professional transformation and healing. Welcome, Vianella. Thank you, Reverend Celeste. I'm delighted to be here, very honored. We're delighted to have you here. Like I said, I've known you for a long time and you have been studying A Course in Miracles longer than I have. And I've been studying Course in Miracles for quite a while. So tell me, what is your favorite A Course in Miracles lesson? Whether it's in the workbook or whether it's in the text, what's your favorite? It's interesting. Um, it's, and it's, it's somewhat of a mantra in my mind as things come up. I am as God created me. Because wow. that's all encompassing, including every experience I've had in humanity, not being my experience, not being my thoughts, and not being my feelings, as what we know that we are transcendent beings. I am as God created me. And the whole purpose is to go back to that original knowing in that original blueprint, which aligns us with infinite possibilities. 
That's so funny because I'm glad I didn't ask the question, which I might have asked is my favorite is I am as God created me. What's your favorite? <laughs> That's so funny. Well, one mind and brilliant minds think alike. <laughs> that. Yes. It's a great so, answer. Mm -hmm. So you've been, you know, hanging out in the land of Kemet for quite a while and you masterfully facilitate Egyptian roots of science of mind. Tell me, what excites you the most about the teachings of Kemet? Wow. Every time I go back, and I'm scheduled to go back in September, um, provided things open up, uh, every time I come back, I realize and see how much this information has been there for thousands of years, anchored for us in stone, energetically still available, and acting as an activation point for anyone that chooses to step in here. The ideas that we have in, in new thought and quantum thinking is what I call in quantum consciousness is not new. The Egyptians were masterful. They didn't have a separation between science and spirituality. It was one and the same. Where man uses science, spirituality, science as a way of empirically uh, discovering how the universe is created and how we're created, they it it's a it's one and the same conversation, and it's not mutually exclusive. And the fact that they anchored a lot of these scientific awarenesses that we are still discovering in physical form without the instruments, uh, without having to have empirical data, they could travel in consciousness. For instance, most people know that the pyramids on the Giza Plateau are aligned with the Orion constellation. They didn't have big telescopes back then, <laughs> but right. they could meditate on the night sky. They observed the, the um, process and the rotation of the celestial bodies. And I firmly know that they traveled there in consciousness and were not confined to the idea of being just a physical being. They were in connection with the heavens. They were connection with nature and they were connection with their physical experience at the same time. A lot of that is shown through their mastery of chemistry, um, which some people see as uh, their ability to preserve things. We get the word ch chemistry from Kemet. Um, we get our symbol for our medical symbol with the snake swirling around right off the temple walls. We get our scales of justice symbol from the symbol of Ma'at. We get so much. Uh, that's only touching the hem of the garment of things that have been there from time um, memorial. And of course, civilizations at that time knew that. That's why Plato studied studied in Egypt. He wrote about Egypt. That's why Alexander built the Library of Alexandria there, because they wrote down what the people knew in consciousness and was a part of the awareness of the high priest order to maintain and handing it down to the initiates for the unfolding of mankind. Now, you mentioned some writings that were on the walls. Tell me a little bit more about the curriculum that we would find on the walls of uh, the Egyptian days. Wow. Um, each temple has the full story of man's ascension on it. And it is really depicted in images and scenes. And it is an understanding, like for me, energetically, it's an activation point to see a symbol. We know about, for instance, glyphs have certain energetic meanings. And we say that a picture paints a thousand words. So the way things are, 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 are phrased there, even in the languaging, where it takes for us a letter and then letters composed into a word to be meaningful, one sim symbol is packed with meaning in, in, on the, the walls, in the hieroglyphics. And I think of the times that many people have come to go through the process of awakening or initiation or activation, that energy is imbued in those, um, in that writing in, in stone. And the fact that it sits on what we call a crystal grid, it has an energetic, it is an energetic for, vortex in and of itself. So it activates that inner knowing that's written in our hearts and our own DNA. And more than 
uh, a spiritual experience, it's an activation in consciousness. When you see something, it activates a memory. And each symbol is indeed a metaphor of what Joseph Campbell called an archetype, not a god. If um, I remember one of the first times I went, the Egyptologists referred to what people refer to as gods, like Horus or Isis. He said the nature, Horus. Well, nature translates for them as nature. So all of those are representations of natures or aspects of God, aspects of us. And they knew about the multidimensional aspect of humanity of man. It's not divinity separate from being a physical being. We're, we're actually able to see ourselves in our different stages in different ways of expression right on the temple walls. So that's why an initiate could walk through and discover himself, not a belief system outside of him, not a, a divinity that's based on a hierarchy, but an aspect of his own being. Now you have a wonderful workshop called Multidimensional You. I remember um, you having a way of, of getting us in touch with, with who we are energetically. Can you say something about how the distance is shorter than we think about how much we're able to affect one another? Yes, that's quite interesting. Um, I did this uh, demonstration, with, which, which you know, with these hangers. But basically, we have our physical body, which is less than 1% of our presence, and that we are energetic beings. And we have a frequency, and that frequency is extended beyond our bodies. Scientifically, they've discovered this, that it's the energy of the heart is the most powerful and the center of our energy field. It is bigger, like a, a, a hundred times bigger than the energy field of the brain. And that's measurable. Like you've seen um, them show a cell under a microscope and you see the halo around it, the light. That's the light energy. And if we could see ourselves when we're vibrating at a what they call a higher frequency, we're in love, we're in appreciation, we're, we're in thankfulness. And that is expressed and extended far beyond our bodies even more than when we're in fear, when we're in concern, when we're in anger. And science has been able to measure that in what they call the torsion field. The Heart Centered Math Institute has done measurable tests and experiments to discover what that torsion field is. It looks somewhat like a donut. It radiates from us as a center out into the universe. And so we're bigger than what we think. That's why when you, for instance, you get into an elevator, people get uncomfortable because someone's too close to them, even though they're not touching them because you're in their energy field. That's why you can feel someone come up behind you or sense when someone's in the room because there's a part of you that's extended way beyond your physical body. Right. And that's more real. That's what the body is anchored in. Now, when you were talking about um, Egyptian uh, consciousness, I was, I was thinking of how I may have a clue to understanding why sometimes I can drop into other dimensions where I can connect with ancestors and that I, I'm wondering, um, is there any kind of, um, truth to that particular theory? Well, one, we know that energy never dies. That means we never die. We go back to pure quantum energy, some call spirit. So one of my um, wonderful ways of, 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 of addressing this is in the what if. What if there are multiple dimensions, different dimensions of frequency of existence? What if in that dimension, those people we call, I, Maisha, Dr. Maisha and I, we termed it the A-team. She started off with avatars and ancestors. I added archangels, ascendant masters, and archaea. So what if all of those aspects in being that are, that are a part of us, because remember, we co-mingle, just because we can't see them with eyes, we can experience them in other states of consciousness because they're just in a, different, in a different frequency, much like tuning into the frequency of a particular radio station. 
Right. And when you line up with that, you're able to perceive from that energy level or dimension the existence and truly communicate. So yes, that is very real. Okay. Um, you mentioned Dr. Maisha. Dr. Maisha was a guest on Mystic Magic about 10 episodes ago back in season one. We just finished season one. So you work closely with Dr. Maisha. Since we won't have the opportunity to have her back on Mystic Magic in this dimension, as I had anticipated, um, tell us as we mourn her and continue to celebrate her life, what was her greatest lesson for you? Wow. Dr. Maisha Hazard, friend, soul sister. Uh, when we met, it felt like when we got to know each other this time, it felt like we known each other for lifetimes. And we even had experiences of, of lifetimes together. We discovered those. What I know from my experience of her and the consistent experience of others is that she's so championed the magnificence in everyone. Even if she met you in your experience of what some might call your lowest of low, and as A Course in Miracles says, what we perceive as our greatest setbacks or can have and most often have been our, great, our greatest advances, mm -hmm. she saw the greatest advancement, the opportunity, the breakthrough, and she saw the brilliance in people. She saw, she, and she championed that for us to see it ourselves. And so I know that she changed many lives from holding that unbroken space. Yeah, and she even did that on Mystic Magic with me. And she gave a description of helping a young man do that as well. Yes. Just going back to Egyptian spirituality for a moment. Um, what do you think would be comparable today to the Kemetic mystery schools? Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. Um, so is, far, is well, there anything? <laughs> all encompassing? I don't know. If, if, when they, those that are, are pretty much private, and they, there are, are mystery schools, uh, which I know. And, mm -hmm. um, and what I do know is that <clears throat> most of the world religions or practices are emphasis on different aspects of what was the and is the comedic mystery school. Some focus in consciousness, such as new thought, religious science. They focus on the mind. Um, we have Buddhism that brought in the mindfulness, some on spirituality and the particular practice of discipline. Some, so they, some on understanding the power of vibration through sound vibration, through, through chanting, some through, through it's tap, tapping into the different aspects of the multidimensional world and the multidimensional aspect of ourselves is a tall order. Mm -hmm. What is different today is that now most of those do not include a physical initiation, and some do. Sometimes, and even say in the vision quest and the, the Native American uh, society, the, that practice, it is to transcend the physical limitations or, or other practices where you step out of the focus on your physicality to step into the, your spirituality, your, the aspect of yourself that's busy, bigger than the spiritual body. So there are some traditions that incorporate that um, and the comedic mystery schools incorporated all of it. It started at the base physical chakra and it worked itself all the way up to the crown for right. us to integrate, um, our true selves. So we could concentrate on our chakras and, and get a little bit of insight into what that is. The chakras are a representation of the different levels of awareness and they are energy fields, as you know. Yes. <clears throat> so in today's climate, where there's an appearance of separation, it's humongous, greater than the, the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. what ancient wisdom principle of TOF can we use to bring us on one accord and toward oneness? What do you think? I think of 
the seven, what they call hermetic, because it's really comedic, the, the principles of taught or trimagestis um, is renamed by the Greeks as Hermes. Within those seven principles is the law of mentalism. Mm -hmm. If and when people are really conscious that what you think of and what you focus on is what manifests and in these times there is an awareness that things are becoming more evident and physicality is generating more immediately and the law of vibration what you focus on you will get the energetic match within your own experience even if it's not in the same form as what you extended it will become energetic within your own being being focused on for instance being worried or angry or hateful is a dense energy field maintained at such an intensity for an extended period of time it is what scientists have called stress in the body well they have known that stress is a major killer and and for and the initiation or activation and exacerbation of every illness that we have. In other words, it brings us out of alignment with our wholeness. Something as simple as that. So I, I focus on and think about those two major laws, the laws of mentalism, my thoughts have power, and it creates, and the equivalent vibration or frequency of those thoughts are what will come back to me and what I will experience at some level, in some yeah. form. Yeah. That explains some things because, um, you know, I've been doing, having, uh, having a lot of diversity conversations and, um, you know, there's some anxiety around that that just comes unexpectedly sometimes that, um, that I'm keenly aware of, but um, I, I now know that there's a connection. So I know I have to couch myself in a way of, of unconditional love so that I can dispel some of that and dissipate those, those moments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, you know, you, you're very busy. I know you got some things in the works. Tell us uh, what you'd like to promote. That's um, going to be of interest. I know to our listeners. Well, speaking of what you said, the times that we live in um, a couple of things I'm bringing to the forefront. One is uh, the diversity program that I have called I See You. Mm -hmm. And with what we're experiencing now, the awareness and the willingness to say, I see you, um, I am putting forth to bring this program into corporations, into organizations to understand what that really means to see another human being before you rather than to see the color of their skin or, um, you know, any characteristic or, or, or cultural or nationality about them. The other is um, relevant and on the forefront because of these times is called a time for forgiveness. There is an opportunity for us with everything that we're seeing, especially now, to give forth all of our beliefs, all of our frustrations, all of our judgments, all of our anger, and to know that it's not about doing it for anyone else. It's not turning the other cheek to be slapped on the other side. <laughs> it is not about saying or sanctioning that someone did something and it's okay. It's about unbinding yourself from the power that that dense energy or fear or judgment has for each of us personally. So I mean, really that is in my heart and mind. I need to take that one. <laughs> so tell us where we, we can find out information. Through. Huh? We all do at some point. Why I, that's when I grant why it came through because it's, you know, starts off from my own inner practice and extends itself in, in my sharing. So. so give us your website so we can look out for those dates and, and get the information for the Zooms or whatever your platform is for presenting those. It is called Conscious Conversations with a Z on the end, dot com and dot org. So run together, Conscious Conversations with a Z, dot com and dot org. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I am so glad that we were able to have this time together. It seemed like the only way I can catch up with you long enough to visit with you. I miss you. I love you. And, um, you know, for those who don't know, like V, V's part of my, my, my family, she's part of my tribe. So, so, um, I just really appreciate who she is and, and what she brings and you can tell why. I so appreciate you, um, Celeste, I, and I thank you for what you do through Mystic Magic and so much more. Thank you. This is Mystic Magic, exploring our spirit to understand our lives. Blessings. Love presses. It will not be denied. Love remains. It will not be diminished. Love transforms. It will not be destroyed. Love will be what it needs to be. Love will be when it needs to be. Love will be how it needs to be. Love is life. Life is love. Even when disguised as its very opposite, love teaches. Even when the student is absent in mind or body, the heart remains. Though bodies perish, love lives. Though monies deplete, love gives. Love presses sorrow into joy, freedom into truth, darkness into light, hatred into understanding. Love lives. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Celeste A. Frazier, and this is Mystic Magic. We'll be back next week when my topic will be the div in diversity, and my guest will be Tracy Brown, licensed practitioner and a master diversity trainer. It'll be great to be with her. Please see our show notes to get more information about today's conversation. For more podcasts, please subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, feel free to do so. Mystic Magic can also be found on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeart, Stitcher, and many more great podcast venues. This is Mystic Magic, exploring our spirit to understand our lives.